Joining me once again on the program is Nika Noel. She's a writer, producer, and director of straight, gay, lesbian, and transgender-oriented adult films. She was also recently honored as an industry game changer in adult video news. Nika, it's great to have you back. And I've been uh, reading about your your uh, talks at Columbia and Yale here in, in the Northeast. And one of the topics that I found really interesting that was there that I want to get into with you is that of... What is the effect of pornography broadly, and we can talk also more specifically, on culture? You know, we hear a lot about what's the effect of violence in video games and movies, and how does that translate into real-world actions? And I think the same questions could be asked about sex and pornography. So let me first just make it the broadest question possible. How do you answer the question? of the effect of porn and then you know you can get specific with the type of porn if you want because i know that's a big thing but the effect of porn on society i think it that it's probably not true that um that men are watching porn movies and thinking to themselves gee all women uh want to do pile driver and they want to uh have me ejaculate in their face and and this is something that uh that I should expect from women. This is something that I I demand from women now that I've seen it in a porn movie. I think that's kind of ridiculous to think that that men are that um, that prone to suggestion. <laughs> um, I certainly haven't found that to be true in in my personal life. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's probably one of those unfounded fears that people have that. Um, that if women are, quote, portrayed in this way, that men are going to think, well, this is the way that women should be treated. I don't think that there's really anything to indicate that that's true or that that's becoming a problem. Um, one thing that I find interesting is that nobody talks about uh, how badly men are objectified in porn movies. Nobody seems to be uh, concerned about that. The fact that so often in porn movies, um, you don't even see the, the guy's face. He's not even depicted as a human being. Um, I think men are far more objectified in porn movies than women are. They're just literally there to provide, um, you know, their, their penis to the scene, which is mostly focused on the woman. So to and play, simply to play devil's advocate with that, there are some who would hear you say that and say, look, the men are also objectified and that, you know, they're these detached bodies. They have no base, which is connected to they're not even really people. I think the counter to that would be, OK, that may be the case. But bear in mind that the majority of porn is produced for men and that 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 dynamic of not even including the men and the man as a person may actually be a response to the desires of the men consuming the films. Could that argument not be made? Well, I think that argument is made a lot. And, and as I've said before, I don't think that that is an accurate argument. I think that once we, um, we started getting feedback from men and from male viewers uh, via the Internet, whereas before they, they didn't have a way to give feedback about what they what they wanted to see and what they didn't, what they would prefer to see in their porn movies. We found that that is not what they wanted to see, that they, they did want to see um, more realistic sex, more realistic women. It's basically, that that's why I have a career. I mean, that's why my movies are selling. They're not all selling to women. I mean, I, I think I have more um, male fans than female fans. And what I've heard from men is that this is what they're really looking for. This is what they really want. So. I think there was a perception that, um, you know, I mean, that, here's the thing. We don't really understand our sexuality very well. We don't talk about it openly. So many people still won't even admit to liking porn or watching porn, um, don't really know what they like or why. And so I think there's been a lot of misconceptions about what men are looking for, what women like and don't like. Um, it's still widely believed that women just want to see romance porn, that they just want to see you know, lovey-dovey hair blowing in the breeze type of stuff. And, and that's certainly not true. And, and women are, are making it clear that that's not true. So there's been a lot of stereotyping. There's been a lot of misconceptions. And we're just starting now to have a, a real dialogue, I think, via the Internet about what we're really looking for. And we're finding that, um, that men and women are not as different as, as we thought, or as some people want to keep insisting that they are.
Hey, Nika, is there somewhat of a double standard when it comes to if we imagine a mainstream actor or actress saying, OK, instead of doing the typical, we're kind of alluding to sex in a film, we're going to actually have sex and it's going to be shown explicitly, putting aside for a second kind of issues of MPAA ratings and the, and the logistics of that. Would would society view that differently than they would someone who is a, quote, porn star? And if so, is that a double standard or is it justified to see the two differently? A little of both. I think that um, I think that what bothers people a lot about porn, and this is something that's changing a little bit, is it's not necessarily the sex or the nudity, but the fact that a lot of the time there doesn't seem to be a lot of thought and artistry put into it. I think that people. Um, People change their perspective very quickly when you present them with something that you obviously put a lot of thought and care and time into and where the performers uh, were obviously uh, approaching it from the perspective of, of this being their art and this being work that they're proud to be doing and care about doing. Um, state of mind is really everything, even with porn, and unfortunately, uh, especially when you know, gonzo porn became popular, um, there was this perception of porn just being people that, you know, just kind of sleaze bags with cameras that didn't really care about what they were doing and it was just um, trying to show as much graphic nudity and explicit and shocking imagery as they possibly could. And I think that just, uh, that leaves people cold. Meaninglessness and artifice is something that um, that people don't generally respond to on a deep level obviously they want to see something that uh, that they can relate to and that arouses something in them that um, that feels substantial and a lot of porn uh, doesn't do that that's why um, now there's there's a lot of controversy about that that movie I think blue is the warmest color I think it's called that has an explicit scene in it Apparently, I haven't seen the movie yet. And there's a lot of talk about this. Is this a pornographic film? No, it's an art film. And um, and I think you can say that, that it's an art film if, if there was thought put into it, if there's, um, if there's something specific that the director and the performers are trying to bring to the audience and they put that kind of artistry and care into it, then it's no longer an argument about whether sex is, is good or bad. All right. So much to talk about, as always, with you. We've been speaking with Nika Noel. She's a writer, producer and director of straight, gay, lesbian and transgender oriented adult films. Nika, as always, we didn't get to everything, but we'll have you back and certainly talk about much more. Thanks for being on. Thank you very much.